Hola, bienvenidas. Avui tenemos el honor de poder conversar con la Dani Lin, una de las artistas más compromesas amb el movimiento vegà y amb el movimiento de derechos de los animales desde un punto de vista artístico. La, la pintora, la nuestra convidada, ha vingut desde Washington DC, desde los Estados Unidos, para exposar a la galería Flash Gallery del barrio de Sants de Barcelona. Welcome, Dana. Thank you, gracias. It's very nice meeting you here in Barcelona. It's my pleasure to be here. We are very happy to interview you. I, I really appreciate the opportunity. I'm happy we're able to connect. Thank you very much. So, you are one of the most committed art artists in animal <laughs> rights movement. So, what say our critics about you and your artwork? I, I appreciate your uh, your compliments on my work and and uh, I'm very very happy with the success that I have been seeing and growing success in the work I've been doing on animal rights uh, it's not a subject I have painted about uh, as focused for that many years I would say for the past two years it has been my primary focus of my work um, I had been a vegetarian for about 15 years and now vegan for the past year so that has helped animal rights and veganism and vegetarianism influence more of my work with that change. Um, as far as critics, I, I wouldn't say I have that much criticism except for with some of my vegan work and vegetarian animal rights work, it has almost been too aggressive for some people um, and that has been a signature of my work overall. I have something I feel strongly about and that's why I enjoy painting because I can express myself through paint and so if I have a very strong opinion on something, I will sometimes paint it very aggressively, and then it's kind of hard to look at. Uh, for example, I did a painting called uh, Baby Back Ribs, and it was you know, the idea of eating pork ribs, um, and they're referred to as baby back ribs. And so when I hear that, I think, a baby. And so I did a painting of a baby, a human baby, with its back open, and you can see the ribs. And it's very effective. Uh, but people don't necessarily want to hang that on their wall <laughs> and, and look at it every day. And what say meat eaters when watch buy things like this? Yeah, that one, um, meat eaters and vegetarians alike have a problem looking at it. For the meat eater, it's uncomfortable because they realize I'm right in what I'm expressing, that is exactly what's happening as a baby is dying and you're taking its ribs out to eat them. And then the vegetarian or vegan may completely agree with it and just have a hard time looking at it um, because it is in a more emotional reaction for a vegan, for an animal rights person, because we feel that much more strongly for animals and so it's harder to look at. And do you have the option to choose pigments or other materials cruelty fee to perform your artwork? They are um, they are available. That is something I will have to admit. It's something I have just started to look into. Um, it's uh, going vegan is something that was a long time coming. Like I said, being a vegetarian for so long and making the switch over to veganism, it was a lot of things other than just not eating dairy and eggs that I had to start to factor in, like looking for products, shoes, belts, purses that are not uh, animal based. And so art supplies are on my list of things I'm now researching and, and removing from my, from my repertoire and trying to find more animal friendly products. Uh, with the paint though, it is a little bit more difficult and it's not something I uh, have completely uh, transformed over to yet. But you know, my purse is not leather and my shoes, I'm buying all vegan friendly products now, wherever I can. How do you consider the animal rights movement like an artist? in North America or in around the world? Um, how do I consider the movement as far as... The artistic animal rights movement. Um, I wasn't that familiar with it before doing it myself. I wasn't calling myself an animal rights artist. It was just another social topic, just another, another topic I felt strongly about and wanted to paint. And then the more I painted on the subject and the more attention my work and I got for it, the more I realized I was part of a movement. I was part of a group of artists who are focusing on animal rights. Um, and it felt great to be a part of a, a growing movement. I think it's the best time, the most important time. There's such a um, momentum behind the movement now. I feel like I, I happened upon it at just the right time. 
um, and I'm invigorated every day. There's always a new idea. I'm often asked if I'm concerned about running out of ideas. I paint a lot um, and I've never been at a loss. It's almost like uh, there's too much to say and there's too many things I want to express and share. Um, so I don't think I'll ever run out of, out of ideas or painting ideas for this. And one of your paintings is called Matador. Yes. And this is obviously about the Spanish bullfighting. Mm -hmm. It's in the collection of July uh, 20... Uh, 31 days yeah, in July. 10, 31, Correct. right. So why did you show the staff men, not the bull? It's really interesting to yes. it. Uh, there's sort of two stages to the background. The 31 Days in July project is something that I did for 10 years, actually with my husband and fellow painter, Matt Ciso. Uh, we started it in uh, 2003 at the start of the Iraq War, um, and the project was to document history. You know, the United States started the war in Iraq, we wanted to document history, and so every day in July, we did one painting per day, each one inspired by a news story of that particular day. So the matador painting you speak of is from i think 2010 I think, or maybe 2011 uh, and so there was a story about the controversy behind bullfighting the fight of getting it stopped um, and the argument on both sides i find very interesting to hear a spaniard's uh, support of it and another spaniard's argument for it so that was in the news uh, the reason the story was of additional interest to me is from a previous trip to barcelona um, I had never given bullfighting much thought in, in prior years and on a trip to Barcelona we're looking at the TV and there was a bullfight on and I sat and watched some of it and I actually, I had no idea, I didn't even know the bull was killed at the end. I'd never watched, I'd never, I sat and watched this bullfight and just cried. I, I've never been so affected by something so strongly, I mean, not never, but it was, it made a huge effect on me watching the um, the stab the I don't know what the official word for the the knives or Mandarina. the mandarin uh, watching that go in and watching the suffering and I sat there I couldn't turn it off I just couldn't believe that that's what bullfighting was um, so that obviously left a very big impression so for the 31 days in July project when the news was talking about Spain and the argument pro and con for bullfighting I wanted to paint about it so I painted the matador and he was the one who was stabbed. Um, and the reason for doing that is just the same with my vegan and animal rights paintings. I think people see things a lot more clearly when you turn the tables and, and show it to them from the other perspective. So they, they might not have sympathy for a bull, but when they see a human in that condition, they all of a sudden realize, like, oh, that is brutal. Um, and I try to put animals more an equal playing field with humans by doing paintings like that. But anyway, still nowadays, some painters say bullfighting is a very colorful topic. Maybe Picasso was the best example mm -hmm. for this. What would you like to say about this? Um, well, I think... Like an like uh, artistic topic. Artistic? Because this yeah. is very important still in this country. Yes. Uh, so it's something I have to be very careful to speak on only from my perspective. Um, I'm an American, like I said, it was only maybe five or seven years ago that I first gave bullfighting a thought. Uh, it's not something that's spoken about in my country. Um, and so it wasn't until I saw it on television that I was able to form a very strong personal opinion on how I feel about it from, you know, an animal rights and a, uh, that, that perspective. Um, but I really don't feel I can speak on and, or argue with someone who is from Spain and, and finds it to be such an important part of their cultural heritage, I, I don't have a place to argue with someone who is in support of it because it's part of the country's heritage. I can just say, how can, how can people do that? Um, and all your artwork yes. have an important social element. Yes. Did you perform our street or something like that? Uh, no, I've never done street art, with the exception of, I, I did one mural once in Washington, D.C., but it, um, I'm not someone who um, does street art for a couple of reasons. One is I don't like the impermanence of it. Um, I really enjoy, first off, the intimacy of just working at home in my studio by myself. I work very quiet. 
It's a very uh, solitary type of thing. So on the one hand, I just can't imagine being out in public and having people s interacting when I was working. Um, and also a lot of the street art in the United States, at least in the city where I live in Washington, D.C., is, is not political. Um, so I have been kind of outspoken on being, I hate to say anti-street art, but I'm not interested in street art as I experience it at home. Um, it's very apolitical, it's very nonsense, just people writing their name or... It, it, street art to me, if it's going to be done, should be strong. So I understand you asking because I wish all street art looked like powerful social commentary. I think that's what is good about street art and why there should be street art. But where I live, it's just uh, decorative and meaningless. Uh, and so I've never really joined that movement at home. And as a committed artist yes. like you are, do you think animal rights defense is linked with all social causes and your art is an example of this? Uh, yes, I think it is just one of many social causes. Um, for me, it's a very important one personally, um, and I hope it becomes more in the forefront and it's just an important cause to the mainstream, that it's not some isolated or, or specialty kind of cause that only some people care about. I, I hope and I see it becoming more mainstream, which is very exciting. Um, and the majority of my art, uh, the reason I like to paint is because I have something to say. Um, I think there's a place, I was an art history and fine arts major in college, so I understand from an art history perspective that there's a place for everything. You know, paintings of flowers are very pretty. Uh, it's not what I've chosen to do. Um, I want to paint about emotions and feelings and, and commentary, so it's something I'm, I'm thrilled to, to put my art behind, such an important cause. Thank you very much for the interview, congratulations Thank for you. the exhibition, and good luck in your artwork. Thank you very much, I really appreciate uh, you being interested in, in what I have to say and what I have to paint. I'm um, thrilled for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you. you.